Hello everybody, this is Dan Bigman. I'm a GPR professor from LearnGPR.com and president of Bigman Geophysical. And uh, today we're going to answer a question I got from one of the audience members, <clears throat> which is, what's the difference between the ground wave and the air wave? Really, they asked, what's the difference between the direct ground wave and an air wave? And so, to answer this question, I'm actually going to break it down into three different parts, which is going to be a ground reflection, a ground wave, and an air wave. So here's kind of how it works. You have your, um, your ground surface. You have your ground surface. That's better. And here is your GPR, your transmitter and a receiver within your GPR box. This is called a ground coupled GPR. And what that means is that your actual GPR antenna box sits on the ground. It's physically on the ground as you're pushing your cart or you're pulling, dragging your antenna. Uh, it sits on the ground. And what this does is it basically turns your antenna and the ground into an antenna. The antenna and the ground together somewhat become the antenna. So it's, they're coupled together. So when they're coupled together, two things happen. Number one is, and maybe it's easier if I kind of visualize it like this, okay? Transmitter, receiver, here's your box. Your signal comes out. Right? It's going to go through the ground surface and spread with depth. However, as it's spreading out from the source, the transmitter, some of the energy is going to go directly from the transmitter to the receiver. Okay, From the transmitter to the receiver. It never hits the ground. It's just going from the transmitter to the receiver. That is what we call the direct airwave. Okay? This should say direct. Direct airwave. Some of the energy, because it's a ground-coupled GPR system, will actually ride into the ground, ride along the ground, and then get recorded by the receiver. This is what we call the direct ground wave. Okay, the direct ground wave. So when you have a coupled, a ground-coupled GPR, you will get energy or signal going from the transmitter directly to the receiver, never having hit the ground. And so this is what we call a direct airwave. Some of the energy, however, will go into the ground, ride along the surface or just under the surface, and then get recorded by the receiver. This is going to be a little, a little slower, okay? And this one is going to be a little faster. It's real close. Okay, it's really close, but a little slower, a little faster. When the ground coupled system is on the ground, it's hard to differentiate between the actual direct ground wave and the air wave because they generally will overlap with each other. Okay, so as you're building a radar profile, right, and you have, okay, so here's your profile, and you get your direct wave. And then you get your, you know, your direct air wave, then you get your direct ground wave. They will overlap each other, and they can be hard to piece out and tell which is which. Right, so one last thing to kind of complicate this is, what if you have an air coupled system? Okay, you have an air coupled system, right? And so here's your ground. This is your, your ground surface, and um, I don't know, you have a, a, a vehicle or something like that. Okay, I know it doesn't look like a, all right, don't laugh at my art. Okay, so here's your vehicle, make it a, a van. Okay, there's your van. And for your van, here is your GPR system. Okay, that's your GPR system. So what happens when this comes down now? When this 
air coupled system comes down, two things are going to happen. You have a transmitter and a receiver. So you'll get that direct air wave going from one to the other. Then you'll also get a ground reflection, which will hit the ground and come back up. So you can kind of get a ground reflection if you have on a ground coupled system, if there's enough distance between the actual bottom of the box and the antenna itself. That could happen. Um, but a lot of those will overlap. The nice thing about this is you'll get uh, an air wave, and then this is your profile, and then you'll get your ground reflection. And you can move this to time zero. Uh, um, to define where your ground begins. So I hope this was helpful. Direct air wave goes from transmitter to receiver directly. Direct ground wave basically rides inside the ground or along the ground surface uh, from transmitter to receiver. That tends to happen or only happens with a ground coupled system. Um, but if you have an air coupled system, you can also get a ground reflection. Uh, all of that could happen with a ground coupled system too. So I hope this helps. Hope this makes some sense. Uh, these three can be very difficult to parse out from each other, like I said. So I caution you. Uh, if you're trying to delineate, well, which is which, um, different schools of thought. Some people say you can, a direct wave is first, then a ground coupled system, so remove that. Others say it's so close that you're splitting, you know, nanos of nanoseconds, and so just take the first response, uh, which is a direct air wave anyway, but it's basically the ground wave as well. So I uh, leave it up to you. Hope this helps. Please share this around. If you found some value out of this, share it with a friend, a colleague, or coworker. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. We're trying to help as many people as we can all around the world, get access to good information. And um, please, if you thought this was helpful, hit the like button. Okay, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you on the next video. Thanks.